Love it as frontline. I love it as late game insurance. See if they can poke their way to a game two victory or if BLG will take it 2-0 in game number two, BLG EDG. I <laughs> love that poster. I love how it just evolved into a cacophony of sound. They're just like, I don't remember when to say Jayo. Let's just throw it somewhere. It's one of the most fun things about the crowds. You never know where they're going to end up. But EDG going for a very aggressive positioning here on the bottom side jungle of BLG. It usually ends with LGD. But this time, not <laughs> so. Like, this is a must-win game for Edward Gaming. They have a very tough schedule ahead of them. And they're sitting at eighth place currently in the standings. They drop this one. Stakes are super high, very good chance that they do not make playoffs. You have to remember, the lowest Edward Gaming has ever been in the regular split is second place. That's how consistent Woo. they have been, and they don't want to lose that. I, I don't know if they're going to be getting that one this split, love it, <laughs> but staying in the playoffs, I think, is a better goal. We're going to see Clear Love starting here onto the Raptors, actually. Oh, BLG. No, I apologize. Started red buff into yes. the Raptors. Yes. So I, I really like this move. Usually the Olafs do like to start on their blue side. It helps with their clear speed. So EDG read this. They go for an early level one invade. They get a lot of kleptomancy procs, and they also start a vertical jungle. A lot of damage coming in into the mid lane here from Scout. We're saying this was a potentially good matchup. You do have to land your abilities, but I trust Scout to do it. You know, former SKT sub was training under Faker, came down to China and I believe season five. So mechanically gifted to say the very least. And he's doing pretty well in this lane early on. Taking a look at Clear Love's runes on the Evelyn, it is pretty much what we see. Uh, see typically it's all about the burst potential so you have the magic penetration from sudden impact you have the electrocute being brought on and you also have that uh, absolute focus one shot is the name of the game and he's looking for targets to do it I think he will be able to set up a 3-3 versus 2-2 scenario which is you know we it's very typical in the LPL it's one of the strongest lane dives earlier on but the question is can uh, the Evelyn actually get the crowd control to make that work. Interesting as well. This is the first time Clearlo has played this pick ever since the Evelyn rework. So, gonna see if he still has his old tricks and his old proficiency on the champion. He was able to steal by the Krugs, but not gonna be going for the gank. We were looking at the top lane just a second ago, but uh, maybe an engage here in the bottom lane. Good devour by Mako, but top lane, actually, we just saw a trade going really well for Ray. Yeah, Ray, actually, uh, he was willing to hold back. He knew the Olaf was around his section of the map. So he said, you know what? I'm not going to go up and contest this uh, CS and lose my HP. I'm going to stay beneath my tower. He's keeping to himself, basically. And if you're playing a vertical jungle, you kind of have to play that way. Clear Love looking to farm up here towards level 6. Once you get that, get the invisibility, get the gank power of the ultimate. And that's going to be so strong for him if he's able to get there in time. But... <laughs> Meteor, I think I think Meteor has a lot cut out for him because if he's able to get some ganks off before Clear Love can affect the map, that puts BLG in a great position. But if he's not, Alt Evelyn can do a lot in a gank. Yeah, you know, Evelyn's one of those picks that has been tearing up solo queue for a long time. Ever since the rune changes allowed you to get more ability power in your build without sacrificing uh, without sacrificing your rune choice, Evelyn actually has a very very good win rate in solo queue. The problem just is that. In professional, her first six levels are too painful to deal with. Pro teams know how to punish that, they can ward that, and you're basically saying that we're gonna have no impact early on in the lanes. We're gonna have no say whatsoever. However, what I love about EDG and their draft currently. Oh, oh, this is gonna be a lot of damage. That was oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> it didn't land, but that was it was scary. It was really good from Kuro too. Yeah, yeah. He definitely spotted out the Evelyn. Remember, she doesn't get her uh, invisibility until level six. And uh, going on with my little rant about Evelyn, what I really like EDG doing with that vertical jungle is you pretty much equalize the laning deficit, uh, the ganking deficit from Evelyn. It's 
like if we're doing vertical jungle, I know where you are at all times. You know where I am, so it doesn't even matter if I can't gank. When you were talking about the laning deficit before you talked about the gank deficit, and we definitely have one for both teams here. The top lane going a lot better for BLG, but the mid lane, there is a huge CS differential between Kuro and Scout. Scout is just absolutely bullying out Kuro here, and he's having a lot of trouble getting anything done. So both of these lanes, potential targets for the junglers, pre or post six for Meteor, but basically only post six for Clear Love. And this is rough. Clear Love not spotting out that ward is going to give Meteor the okay to just go straight in into this matchup. There's the knockup. Again, the Devour, but top lane is a little bit more action packed. Ray flashes away, but the flash in from Meteor as well gets to slow with the Chilling Smite. He's going to use Call of the Forge Gods to try and get out of it. Should be able to get the knockup onto at least one. It's a lot of damage to Meteor, but he still picks up the first blood. Yeah, it's a questionable flash direction for Ray, but he was alone onto the top side. There was no one that was going to be there to help him. And this all did stem from that control ward in towards the top. BLG, they got the same ward last time as well. Oh, this is dirty. A great ward from the bot lane of BLG. Catches out Clear Love, forces the flash, forces the W and the heal from Mako. And the slogan for BLG is that wards save lives. They really have done a great job with the vision like you were talking about. Their Korean solo laners putting down the most wards compared to anyone else in the LPL. And you can see them reaping the rewards for that. Meteor is playing with full vision. Now they do have to avoid this situation. If I avoid tick six, which he should be very close to, he does have the, uh, the, uh, the level lead compared to Jin Zhao. He could find that ar true shot barrage. My boy's farming for it right now. See if. It not, happens. Not gonna get it. No. He might go for the base ult. No. It's way too slow at this point. All right. Back, back to full health. Meteor has hit level six. Clear love still struggling because of that failed bot lane attempt at the Krugs. But once he hits it, he could be looking for a gank. Mid lane would be a good opportunity because Kuro has been constantly shoved and is currently oom. But he's gonna go back, get up his first back. Scout, of course, already got his serrated Dirk, so even more damage onto the Zoe. She's under a ton of pressure. Yeah, this is when the Jace can really start to hammer home the, the leads in the matchup. Serrata Dirk versus the Sork Shoes. Uh, even with the Dancing Shoes, all Jace needs to do is land those auto attacks, get into range to snowball that matchup even further, and Clear Love could come in fairly easily just with the finishing touches and the execution damage on her ultimate. So we're going to see that being struck up already, and we should expect EDG to start using this power spike. It's level 6 and they're already going in. ADD forced to flash. He's going to be stuck here trying to get the knockup on a scout. Not able to land it. He's going to ult down towards his mid laner and jungle and drift his way to safety. <laughs> that was really well done by ADD. He found the gap between the two persons and uh, floated away. I, I, I honestly felt like he already had used his uh, ultimate in that exchange, but I guess that was just the W animation fooling the members of EDG. Yep, doing a great job there, and now Clear Love still looking for a gank into this mid lane. Still invisible. Kuro suspects something is yeah. off, though. He's going to be just fine, but Clear Love's staying, but in the middle of lane. So, playing as the Evelyn, you are spotted out if you're close enough, and also if you tag someone with the uh, with your E, the Allure, uh, then there will be a directional mark that shows up on the champion. Like, they will know which angle that you're coming in on. So clearly they're gonna get spotted out on that mid lane gank. But now he's gonna be going for the Infernal Drake. A good first start here for EDG, especially with their heavy damage composition. It's down to 2,000, and BLG don't look like they're in a position to threaten. 1,000 HP left. And this should be to secure for EDG. No still gonna come out. Yeah, really strong play from EDG. They actually had Ray here preemptively, just in case BLG wanted to contest. And playing off the strength of Scout again, going for pretty much the same type of game plan that they had in game one. It, the question really is right now, can they snowball that advantage with Scout and Clear Love into a sizable gold lead? Currently, they're still in the deficit from those early plays. I want to point out the top lane itemization a little bit here because it's still a little bit weird coming out from ADD, but I love his itemization back from when he went the three reju bead and the potion on Shen. 
I was like, this man, this man knows what's up. And now he's going for the redemption first on the top lane Scion, apparently using it already for the wave clear. It's given him a 30 CS lead. So, I, I mean, I guess I can't knock it till I try it. <laughs> yeah, the redemption wave clear is a pretty smart idea. You do have a base amount of damage that you deal to the wave no matter what. I believe it's 200 just 50 true damage base to the wave. But uh, honestly, in this matchup, he should be able to wave clear anyway. It's the first time we're going to see this build pop up in the LPL. I think it's pretty interesting as a concept. I can see it being very good in the laning phase, but the question is, when those 80 carries are finally scaled up, when they're sitting around with the two items, do you still have that tankiness with just the redemption to face up to the likes of iBoy? Well, last game he didn't seem to have any problems, despite his only items being the redemption, the... Um, sorry. I think this is going to, yeah, this is going to have a lot of ramifications later on when you're trying to play front to back and your tank is holding a redemption. I mean, he's able to get the tank itemization fast enough. I feel like it won't send him too far behind, especially with the lead he has early in lane. I mean, he's not he's not being threatened by the damage from Ray at this point unless he sticks in an extended trade. And as Scion, you don't really have to do that. You, can, you have the knockup, you have the roar of the Slayer to slow them down. So you have a lot of ways to avoid actually full-on fighting. Now, Redemption so is a very good uh, item in terms of its cost efficiency, but let's look this look at this play first. ADD gonna dodge out. He's been using these ults pretty well to dodge the ganks, but that's all he's been able to use them for so far. Now EDG looking to pick up the Rift Herald. They know the top laner's been forced out at the very least. Redemption's still available for him. BLG will use this opportunity to take out the plates. They're starting to ping onto the Rift Herald now. There's nothing they're going to be able to do. Meteor just going to try and farm out the jungle as compensation. Yeah, I really wonder where they're going to be throwing this Herald down because they are currently behind in terms of the tower trade. Iboy did not move towards the top side. That's the difference between this lane swap and the previous lane swap. It was a full-on map side exchange from EDG in game one, but this time it's only about the Herald. Three people showing up for BLG in the bottom side is going to give the clear go-ahead to start the poke machine from EDG. Mid lane towers looking mighty weak. Already three turret platings. The Rift Herald's still there, and there's nothing BLG can do to stop it. They're not going to be able to hit the eye just yet, so we'll still get some autos. ADD getting caught out. Saves him a little bit of time so they can clear Tells out the mid lane. Alt. Oh, he has the redemption, though. He's going to try and use it, but all he's going to do is heal his zombie self. So BLG losing their top laner and very nearly losing the mid lane tower. But at the very least, EDG pick up three turret platings and a kill. Oh, that was such a smart move from EDG, showing that they have some of that map macro moves of their own. They predicted the movement from ADD from on the top side and also got the beneficial trade in terms of the mid lane. Just stepping down on the Herald first, knowing that they had the pink, uh, poke composition, and BLG were slow to defend. So EDG win all across the map on that one single play. They're looking a lot better than last game. Last game, they were having problems at this point in the game. They were down in gold. They were down in objectives. But this time, at the very least, they're up in the ladder. Gold is slightly in favor of BLG, but nothing too substantial. And now if they're able to get this bot lane tower off the poke of Scout, should be a free way to open up the mid lane for them. Sleepy Trouble Bubble does land. There is a cleanse. Doesn't need to use it. And they just walk away. That sequence was really EDG's bread and butter play. We see that so often from Edward Gaming. They win bottom lane super hard. They snowball it into the Drake. And then they immediately move with their Abyssal Voyage to the top side. Lock down Herald again. And then just play off of that map control. Mini goes in, tries to get the knockup, lands it onto two. That's a Sleepy Trouble Bubble onto iBoy, but it's not going to be followed up just yet. BLG not going to be able to find the engage. I think EDG is just the best team to play around, Tom Kench. Like, Mako has so much experience on this champion. They set up global so well. It previously was Shen for Mako, a great, uh, another great global champion that Mako learned how to play and how to manipulate uh, with uh, for the lane, uh, for the map advantages. He's doing it again once on the Tom. That said, I think for this game so far, BLG has done a great job of keeping their bottom lane safe. 
They aren't really worrying about Jin Zhao. He's scaling up. He's gotten his Blade of the Ruin King already, working towards that Ginsu's Rage Blade. And this was their win condition last game. Despite the fact that their mid lane was doing poorly, that lead has almost equalized, just about 16 CS. So BLG have fallen behind in objectives. Yes, they've fallen slightly behind in gold, but that's not the game. However, if they keep seeding these dragons, things are going to look rough. It definitely is the case for Edward Gaming, uh, for, for BLG, excuse me. I, I think this time around, EDG has just brought so many more answers to BLG's front and back team fight. Once that Nico was locked down, you pretty much knew without even thinking that the last two picks were going to be the same. Alistar Scion locked in for BLG on the blue side, and they just want to play front to back. They have that advantage in terms of their frontline tankiness, but this time around, EDG, they have more avenues to attack. They can actually go backward with Clear Love, and he has a decent potential to one-shot the Nico, or at the very least, take her out of the fight. They also have Ray to get that early knockup here. BLG feel like they have to make a move. ADD going in for the teleport. It's a little bit slow, which means Ray's going to be able to follow. Iboy forced to flash already this early into the fight, and so is Ray. Three flashes burned with almost no investment here from BLG, but EDG now looking for the re-engage. Not going to happen. The redemption is enough to scare them off. So two TPs, one for each side, and then three flashes on the side of EDG. Yeah, they lose the dragon, but I think that's a pretty decent trade, especially considering they're probably going to get the spot tower. And I would say BLG definitely come out ahead here. They get the majority of the summoners from the bot side. No flashes between iPoy and Mako. They can look for another pick just like this one. And BLG has been one of the better teams to use that teleport. After the teleport nerfs, a lot of teams just, you couldn't cancel it. A lot of teams were very hesitant to use that and gain advantages on the map. Not BLG, they stay pl still play around that summoner beautifully. Now BLG finally pick up the bottom lane tower, which will be a decent lead for them. They're going to bring it back, the gold lead, into their favor. And they do tie it up one-to-one -one towers. But I want to talk a little bit about this Evelyn because we have not seen it do a whole heck of a lot. All it's done so far is secure objectives, and that's great and all. But I feel like there's so much more potential, especially in picks, team fights to use the ultimate. Oh, no. We're well, talking about picks. Here you have one. Yeah, ADD can't ult away this time. He doesn't have it off cooldown. Still has the flash available. If he gets if he gets out of this, oh. uh, never mind. Oh, boy, does he flash He's not out of it. That flash was very unfortunate for him. He's going to try and chase down Ray. <laughs> yeah, Actually doing a decent job, but not going to take him out in the end. Unfortunate flash situation. Even if he did make it over the wall with uh, with Iceborne Gauntlet, he wasn't going to get away from that one. And here you were talking about Clear Love's potential as a pick. What does he actually do? Well, Evelyn's actually a very good scaling jungle. Like, the back line is not going to get tankier as time progresses, but Evelyn is going to do a lot more damage once she, gets, uh, once she gets those items. Whoa, but Clear Love in a lot of trouble here. Scout going to block it for him. In addition to the Devour, will keep him very safe. Jin Zhao just going to keep pushing here into the top side of the map. I think what you're going to see in one of these team fights is Evelyn is going to find her way into the backside. They're going to chain it up with Orn. Someone's going to get knocked up, and they're going to instantly pop that person. It's going to happen in one of these fights, and I think BLG are put in a really tough situation because of that potential team fight setup. Oh, looking for the pick uh, here on the scout. That's a lot of damage just from the ultimate. Yeah. That's actually insane. Scout has what? to flash away. Jin Zhao chasing. Get one last auto attack. He's got the move speed there. Redemption. Redemption. Oh, yeah! yeah! <laughs> what? That was ridiculous. Hell yeah, ADD. I'm sorry for questioning your build ever, and I will never do so again. The no Redemption armor, first no Scion. No problem. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Redemption first Scion, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to a solo queue near you, I'm afraid. Oh, boy. <laughs> They should really tune the cost efficiency on that. You know, I think it's a little bit too high. <laughs> well, it's been tuned like four times, and I think we're still saying that. So it may be, it may be beyond help at this point, Clement. Now, EDG responding to this bot lane push, but Jin Zhao has so much push potential on this Nico. They're Here going on to Mako, pushing a lot First of damage. Fight. Clear Love coming in. Pop Blossom preemptively by Jin Zhao. Will stop Clear Love from going in entirely. There's the ultimate, but he has to use it to get to safety, so no damage really coming out from it. And does tag Jin Zhao with the execute, but really not enough yet. Only has the Sheen, so she even needs an auto attack for that to go off. BLG forced to back off here. Kuro eating an EQ there from Scout, but will survive. Now Kuro just going to walk away. Scott free. Pretty happy with himself. 
And BLG are going to back off. Fairly successful in their push in the bottom lane. They now have three towers. So they've taken out the entire outer ring, except for the mid lane turret. They just pushed down two in the bottom. So the mid lane turret, probably their next port of call. But the Infernal Drake, 50 seconds, not far behind. These are the type of fights that BLG want to take. They want to be in a sieging position. So when Clear Love comes in, it's actually very easy to predict which angle he's coming in at. In that previous team fight, you could see the front lines for BLG. They were already in position to intercept Clear Love. And he couldn't really do any of that damage that we were waiting for on this uh, Evelyn pick. So that's the situation that they want to put themselves in. However, they do need good map control to actually do that. I think ADD, once again, is going to have to be that split pusher. You may say he might not win the 1v1, but it doesn't matter. As long as he can get those waves pushed in and go to another part of the map, he has what he what it takes. Uh oh, here comes the engage from Ray. Oh, Three-man knockup. That's Ooh. so much damage onto the entirety of the team. They're able to take out many, but ADD coming in, not able to land the knockup himself, and now chunk down to half. Jin Zhao gets engaged on my clear love, but the ultimate only gonna chunk him down to half. The redemption doing a lot to heal the members of BLG. Oh, there, oh Jin Zhao! Burns away! Finally gets taken down by iBoy, and now ADD falls as well. This could be the Baron for EDG, but instead they're going to go for the Infernal Drake. Clear Love scrapes away the last point of HP away from Jin Zhao, and they make it a three for nothing fight in towards the mid lane. That was a collapse potential we were talking about. BLG, they didn't have their front line in ADD. He was trying to set up the siege situation. He was pushing in the bottom, and EDG choose to strike there. Let's watch that again. Orn, great catch potential. We haven't seen the Orn in a very long time. Really getting caught off guards from BLG's side. They find the first early kill onto the support. And then ADD drifts in without any without Kuro there. Kuro was forced away by Clear Love. Kuro did not join the fight. And that's just bad driving from uh, ADD. Can I call it drunk driving from ADD? <laughs> Goes into four people on EDG's side. No backup whatsoever. And unfortunately, Jinja also has to pay the price. Now Ray has picked up his frozen fist. I can finally call it that without it being the wrong name. Because it is the upgraded form. No other upgraded items Why here on EDG. Why do they have to give it extra names? We I know. just call it I know. Enhanced Iceborne Gauntlet. Infinity Edge to Molten Edge. I don't remember any of the rest of them. It's not needed. <laughs> <laughs> it's unnecessary, Kuro. Not going to be able to find the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, but this is a dangerous position for BLG. Once again, maybe caught out here by Both the ultimate. Double ultimates onto <laughs> Mini, but that's a huge chunk from the side. ADD comes in, not able to find the knockup, but clear love. Forced off onto the side, Scout as well being zoned off. Mini doing so much in this fight to make space for BLG's carries, and they're all going to make it out alive as a result. Kuro has to be the hero of that fight. Just one paddle star was able to chunk down iBoy and Clear Love and take them both away from the incoming ADD. And uh, that was a very close situation for ADG. You could see that they were one hit away from taking down the Alistar. They do force a reset from BLG, and the Orn pick is working so well. This is, I, I talked about it in the uh, in the drafting phase. I felt like the Orn pick was a really smart decision to go for. It was that one pick that they were saying, you don't, you know what? We don't need this counter pick from Ray to make an impact in laning phase. We can use this pick and scout out the composition that BLG is going to be throwing at us, and we can use that pick for a team fight counter. Great idea from EDG. And especially in the team fights, you're noticing the rest of the composition as well. You know, we talk about how Nico needs space in that AD carry position, and she has that. The problem is the space created has cracks, and that's where Clear Love can get through. That's where Poke from Scout can get through. Poke from Iboy can get through, and that's creating problems for BLG. Their biggest damage threat is not able to fight. If you look at the situation now, BLG is saying, you know what, we can't split push with the Scion anymore. It's too risky. They have a strong engage tool in the Orn. ADD, you're going to have to come to us. And look at the side lane pressure. EDG has gotten off of that. Both of their top side and their bottom side is pushing in. They're holding BLG here, and even if they don't get the engage, they're still going to get the objective gold. Look at BLG. They're pinging it out. They know that they've been lured into this trap. They're going to have to cede a lot of map control if they want to deal with the waves. And this is going to give EDG a very good opportunity to then control Baron. They're pinging onto it as we speak. Maybe setting up a bush gank. Maybe just going to go for it all by themselves. It's all up to EDG at this point. And now BLG are going to have to find a way back into this game. They're not out of it yet. 
They're down a little bit in gold, mostly down in objectives. So they still have a chance in the fights. The problem is they've not been able to find one in their favor. ADD is a key for them to be able to do that. But so far, the only engage he's gotten is one where his DPS didn't really have a chance to enter. And the scaling is also ticking. But wait a minute, Orn's going to go straight in. There's the engage from Ray and forces out the ultimate of ADD. Redemption comes down, brings him back to health. Ooh. Sweepy Trouble Bubble going to land onto Mako, which removes Iboy's safety, but no one can land anything onto him. And the Shock Wave, Shock Blast going to land onto Kuro. ADD taken out. And EDG now have a man advantage if they want to go for the Baron. Yeah, really good dancing by Iboy right there. He tempted ADD to walk forward, thinking that maybe there was a chance. Oh, man. Kuro was going to land something on the Ezreal. Arcane shifting forward. Maybe they could find something, but he just puts himself in a bad position. And EDG walk away with the towers. BLG having a lot of trouble in these fights, getting their carries poked out by the combo of Scout and Iboy. There doesn't seem to be anything they can do to stop it at this point, so... They need to find better angles. They need to find better trajectories into these fights, or I feel like the Baron is off the table. EDG outranged the composition from BLG. They have backline access this time. BLG are finding it very difficult to actually push forward onto the map. They need so many control wards. They need to cover so many potential angles. And what that does is it really allows EDG to, to run them against walls. We see EDG do this so frequently in team fights is that they just try to force your composition into a wedge, break your team into two parts, and then do, do defeat by detail. So at BLG, they're going to find it very difficult to actually venture out across the river onto the map. I think what they're thinking about right now is probably just scaling up and waiting to throw all of their punches in a single Baron fight. So it's not going to be hard for them, especially if they pick up this fourth dragon of the game, because this is just so easy for them at this point. Like you said, they can just poke out the fights. And now if anyone tries to engage on them and force a longer fight, the Ocean Drake will sustain them back up. If BLG had been able to get that Ocean Drake, that'd be really good for them. But instead, they're just losing objective after objective. This is how to counter a Nico composition 101 from EDG. You outranger, you tackle her from multiple angles, you have a backline engage that cannot be interrupted. It's just so many abilities that force Nico to use Shapeshifter earlier on, and that's a 16 second cooldown. So they're really thinking about how to take Jinja out of the fights. It's a ra really great composition that EDG is running here, and I really enjoy what Hart has brought us today. If you're Jinja in this position, what do you do to counter this? You yourself, sure, can't necessarily zone off the poke, can't necessarily stop yourself from getting hit entirely. But it, how do you navigate these fights? It, it's really difficult, but what I think BLG has the advantage and still has the advantage, in later phases of the game, they will have a tankier frontline. And what ADD needs to do is he needs to be proactive with his engage. If he runs into the Orn, you can actually take the Orn down quite easily. He's not as tanky as he used to be. They're gonna spot Al. Ooh, Al's are not spotted. Oh, Mini. Be careful, bud. He knows there's not a ward in that bush at the very least. He doesn't know about the banana brush anymore. Another engage down mid lane. Is this is going to land onto Jin Jiao. The poke not going to land, however. Jin Jiao so low. Redemption saves him. And now Here comes out ADD Star. going in, looking for the knockup. Not able to find it, but so much damage onto the front line. It doesn't look like they even need Jin Jiao to win a fight at this point. And that's how they're initiating double redemption, going to put in a lot of healing despite the reduction. The Sleepy Shovel level lands onto Clear Love, and the teleport is coming in from Jin Jiao. They want to keep this fight going. BLG have the opportunity. Jin Jiao still has the AoE damage. Clear Love caught again. Second Sleepy Trouble. Clear Love. Oh. There he goes. BLG keeping it going. If they keep this fight, Fight. They're going to win back the lead they've lost. They'll be able to take down this tower. They're not done yet. Kuro still looking for an angle, but he will finally back off. Tries to flash over the wall, but not going to land that one. And Mini hiding behind enemy lines for one minute straight. Finally finds the key pick he was looking for. He pins Iboy against one of the walls, straight into the decimating smash from ADD, and they take the AD carry down. That was a fight where EDG was supposed to win hands down. It was supposed to win easily. Let's watch right here. Ray doesn't get the headbutt onto terrain, so no knockup fall, no extra damage. And that means even though it's an AD carry trade earlier on, Nico does survive the fight and can teleport later on. For the 
back portion of the fight, Puro was your absolute hero. Look at these Sleepy Trouble Bubbles he's finding onto Clear Love. Flashes in just to get it there and force EDG to stay in position. They get the AD carry back with the teleport that Jinjiao has been running. And Mako's like, you know what, buddy? This one I just can't tank for you. I'm sorry, Clear Love. Now, Clement, while you were explaining the team fight, I was doing something maybe a little irresponsible. I was counting how long it took because this was reminiscent of like a season three duration team fight. Just that part, remember that wasn't all of it because they still pushed down the tower, was 35 seconds. These yeah. teams are playing these team fights so delayed at this point. Now that the poke doesn't land, we see the strength of BLG. When you're able to lose your AD carry to poke, not dead though, he's able to back fully heal, teleport back into the fight, and then contribute uh, for another looking for the second. engage. Oh, crazy. ADD, he gets the knockup onto all of EDG, but two, and then Mini goes in with the follow-up engage. BLG just showing a master class in team fighting at the moment. Ray has to get out of there, taking so much damage. The knockup will not land, but it doesn't matter. All but iBoy have been taken down in terms of the carry. Scout still up as well. If he gets the poke off the side, he might get the kill, but no. BLG have won the fight, four kills, and now they're gonna get the Baron. BLG shows you why Vision is a team's best friend. They stopped the Abyssal Voyage, effectively a four-man knockup, changed into a four-man undertow coming in from Meteor, and then another three-man knockup on the side of Mini. This was crowd controlled. City. This was a bounce house for BLG, and they collapsed EDG's entire composition. So well played, so many times this series that we've seen BLG use vision to their advantage. This is all we needed to see. This is all we needed for them to start coming back in this game. This is all we needed for them to start winning again. Now they can't get poked out. Look at ADD. He was able to finish his warmogs finally. So when they have those delayed team fights, he will stay beefy. He will stay that massive tank, and I suspect he's also going to go for the locket once again for safety for his team. With the double redemption as well, it doesn't matter how much poke you can put out. Well, if Kuro's able to pick up a redemption. It still doesn't matter with the one, because you can put out a ton of poke, but if you have a shield and a heal to cover it up at the end, that poke has been negated. And EDG, they're starting to look at a timer for how long they can pull off these team fights. Let's be honest though, EDG, they still have, still have two Infernal Drakes and they have an order on their team. I don't think scaling is as much of an issue for them anymore in terms of this composition. What is, however, is map control. Because BLG has proven again and again, if you give them anything, the ADD, give him an inch and he'll take a mile. The engage coming in, a split fight. Mini takes the uh, engage well. this time. Jin no. Zhao, Clearla finally <laughs> gets a pick, and now BLG might lose all of their members with Baron. The Ragnarok from Meteor will hopefully get him out alive. ADD not as lucky. Kuro getting chased down. Redemption not going to save him. Sion not able to do as much. Meteor needs to get the slow onto Scout. The slow comes in from Mako. And BLG can ace the triple kill from Scout. I think this might just be the game. The entire team is gone. It's going to be 40 seconds for some of these players to come back. And EDG are barreling down the mid lane. That was a bridge too far for ADD. He went in. He did not have a flash. He sectioned off EDG correctly. Yes. But Clear Love with a dagger in the back takes out Nico, takes out Jin Zhao, not even the Pop Blossom used, and that was the Evelyn that we were waiting for the entire game. EDG, they bide their time and finally win the game off one final 